something you can't get out of your system. It goes over and over and over inside your mind every day of your life, you know, you're reliving it all the time. It's a feeling Peter Curie knows well. A feeling he's had since a July night in 1988. As a young man on the move, the boss of a construction company, he's used to dealing with the real world, the tangible. That night, as he lay watching television in his room, he entered another world, a world of the intangible, the unknown. All of a sudden I felt something grab me on the ankle and um, I just got a sensation of pins and needles running up through my body. I was 23 years old at the time and I thought, geez, I'm paralysed and I, I, I got the feeling and the thoughts were going through my mind that I'll never walk again and from that time onwards I'm going to be in a wheelchair. Peter Curry couldn't move, but he could think, he could see, and what he saw when he looked to his right was like nothing on earth. They would have been three to four foot in height, um, wearing hoods or robes, um, wolf hoods, like a monk's robe for example. They had like a very wrinkly forehead, they had um, shiny dark face, their, their skin was like a shiny black leathery look to it. Um, their mouths, their lips were pretty large and um, they didn't make any noise or speak or anything like that. And at the foot of Peter's bed, he saw two more figures, more hideous than the first. They were a taller, seven to eight foot tall. Um, they had the oval, big black eyes, uh, goldish coloured skin, um, pointed chin, very small mouth, like just a slit for the mouth and um, two little holes for, for what nose and nostrils would, where would they be. At that point, one of the tall figures moved closer. Then I noticed in his hand he had, uh, I'd say it was like a needle of some type, a syringe, and he pointed it to the top of my head, right about there. And um, as that he inserted it in, I mean, I felt, didn't feel any pain whatsoever. But um, as soon as that was inserted in my head, I blanked out. This is Peter Curry's impression of that encounter. He says, an encounter with aliens. To me, they were alien, you know, in the sense that I've never seen that type before. So to me, they were alien. They were from another, some other dimension, some other planet. I don't know where they come from. But uh, it was a shock to have them in my room anyway. The next morning, Peter found a scar like a cigarette burn on his leg. He went to his doctor and her diagnosis, it's impossible to say what the actual cause was. Peter Curry also talked to his fiance about the experience. I was explaining to her what happened and I pointed to the top of my head and when I did that, I just touched it and I was under my nail, there was dry blood. And um, she had a look and she basically said to me, there's a puncture mark there. Peter's thought deeply about his experience. There's one aspect that baffles him. After the initial shock of the paralysis, he felt no fear, none at all. I felt like they cared, I really do. You know, I, the, I really felt that the emotion that this being was projecting towards me um, was, was true and real. It wasn't imagination at all. Kath Ross also felt an aura of calmness, of peace, during her brush with the unknown. That was more than seven years ago. She was working as a photographic model, a career she's since abandoned. The night that I got these marks on my head here, I was just home in suburbia asleep, and it must have been about 2 a.m and there was a very bright light in my room. Kath says it was like trying to look directly at the sun. She couldn't open her eyes. She saw nothing, but she felt three light touches on her forehead, three pinpricks. Then she too blacked out and slept until later that morning. I walked past a mirror 
and it looked like I had a tennis ball in my head. It was so huge. So I went straight to my doctor and he took tests and couldn't understand why there was no pain. There was no pain whatsoever. And it took about three weeks before the swelling subsided and it left me with these three scars. Kath Ross says the doctor's test showed no signs of poisons. Those pinpricks could not have been insect bites. She's still trying to come to grips with her experience. Like Peter Curry, she has her theories. All of them point to aliens. Aliens on a mysterious mission. One they both believe was friendly. I think they've got a power to calm me down because that's how I felt the particular night this happened. I was calm and went back to sleep, peaceful sleep. But I don't sleep that well anymore. It's hard to explain, but geez, it happened and it, it, it's as real as, um, you know, catching a bus in the morning to go to work or a train, you know, and you don't forget doing things like that and I just don't forget what happened to me. <laughs>